the addition of two extra rail cars to supplement the uh, initial little rail motor introduced way back in uh, before the uh, Great War uh, led to the introduction of a series of other uh, petrol engined rail cars which began to come into service from 1928 onwards and this is number four rail car number four and it was a, a substantial enlargement on the ex Dermot Valley Light Railway rail cars and it was based on a chassis that had been constructed at the GNR's um, Dundalk works with a um, body put on uh, subsequently by O'Doherty and son of Straban who, who added the bodies for a number of these rail cars and it could um, seat uh, uh, 21 passengers so it was a significant increase in the carrying capacity of these uh, rail cars and uh, it ran from 1928 until about the end of uh, World War II when it was uh, finally scrapped being uh, completely worn out and uh, you can see here that it's hauling a trailer this is an innovation from the same period from 1928 and it was a, a light uh, chassis a rail car trailer uh, the chassis was built at the at the GNR works in Dundalk in 1928 and into 29 and it was introduced soon after and it's a simple uh, uh, vehicle as you can see unpowered of course as a as a trailer and hauling, being hauled by number four. And uh, its um, seating capacity was 28, and originally uh, it had a, a roof rack and uh, for luggage and bikes and all the rest of it, and a ladder running up the back, but that was removed soon afterwards. And uh, the uh, buffers, uh, which were only installed in 1938, because initially it was intended only for rail cars, allowed it to be coupled to steam locomotives so it could supplement uh, normal passenger uh, rolling stock. So those two together, numbers four, and then tr the trailer was numbered five in the rail car series, although there was no powered uh, rail car number five um, in existence. And it was eventually, it survived right the way through to the end of the railway in 1960, and it became the, allegedly it became the cash office at the Donegal Town Football um, Club, um, by 1961 into 1962 and in the 1990s the County Donegal Railway Restoration Society discovered the body and part of the frame up in uh, being used as predictably as a hen house and it's been it was recovered and it is now on display at the uh, fully restored at the uh, railway museum in Donegal town so well worth a visit and that's so that's another survivor unfortunately rail car number four the rail car hauling the um, trailer there didn't survive and uh, when it was scrapped everything was um, was removed and dispersed. Uh, most of it I think was stored by Forbes at Stranola uh, as spares and odds and ends because so many of these bits and pieces uh, re-emerge on other vehicles. So that's rail car number four if I just pull back a bit here and I've got we we'll just stop rail car number four on its tracks and I'll just move along to back along the track where we have rail car number six which is the uh, turn into chase view and this was uh, another major uh, step forward and again it was a product of the um, GNR building the chassis mounting the uh, the engine and it had a 32 horsepower Rio engine and it weighed about um, five tons, uh, five and a half tons and uh, normally it could uh, uh, carry about 30 people so again it's another uh, major step forward for the, for the Donegal Railway and it meant that um, their whole uh, rail car operations now were uh, substantially increasing, replacing some of the steam passenger workings uh, certainly in the quiet uh, runs now the significance of this uh, particular rather rare looking beast is that great long pivoted uh, front bogey which allowed it to negotiate the rather tight curves of the Donegal railway and you can see that the power bogey is centered is at the center of gravity about the middle of the passenger uh, body 
and uh, this was powered from the engine by a basically a chain link which initially only went to one axle but eventually was extended to both axles of the rear bogey which of course is pivoted and uh, it's again you can see it's a vehicle which is exploring the potential of rail cars it's trying to find the best use for them how they're going to be uh, adapted and used it's still a petrol engine on these uh, and the front radial truck had a, a, a side even even the the um, uh, the, the uh, on the front radial truck the, the, the wheels here have a side plate of about four inches something like that so it was added it joined the fleet in 1931 uh, sorry vacuum braking was added in 1931 it had already joined the fleet in 19 the previous year in 1930 and it ran until 1945 when um, it was uh, de-engined and basically put on the scrap line and it was sold subsequently to a private buyer in 1958 but unfortunately as far as can be ascertained nothing of it has survived but these original rail cars are the you can see Forbes working out the way in which he can use these rail cars but also the design of them and they're going to influence the next two uh, rail cars when the Donegal Railway uh, moves from a uh, petrol engine rail car fleet to the addition of a couple of diesel engine rail cars and these are really pointing to the way to the future. So there we are, that's a quick look at rail cars 4 and 6 and trailer number 5. We're slowly approaching, there we are, that's the others halted. Now these would often operate uh, in trains of two, sometimes three rail cars and a trailer behind or a trailer in between so this is not such an unusual and unlikely configuration and if I just bring it in so that it couples up what would normally happen on the sort of extended uh, extended runs where the uh, there were several rail cars joined together is that of course each rail car had to have its own driver all rail cars uh, they, they ran their engines they were running in gear uh, propelling the train forward and um, this would be uh, completely normal for these um, for these cars and oh, there we go switching experience uh, so there we are that's the uh, never had that come up before uh, so there we are that's the the rail car so if I just set this one going that will recreate the effect of all of a train of rail cars so this again this configuration would not be that unusual in the late 20s early 30s and um, but of course once you got into whichever vehicle you were traveling in that was it there's no connection between the two if you wanted to change you had to wait till the next station uh, or I guess just ask the drivers because these rail cars would tend to stop almost anywhere along the route in order to put, take people up and, and set people down and indeed it gave Forbes the opportunity to introduce a whole series of rail car stopping places which um, serve the community very well because it would literally if your um, pathway came right down to the railway track you could get off there and certainly at all crossing places uh, where roads crossed over and there were crossing gates these became known as rail car stopping places officially and um, so you could travel say to Rose's gates that's quite a uh, well-known stopping uh, place on the route out from Donegal Town to Killy Beggs uh, or McMenamin's Gates, there were plenty of McMenamin family members scattered around the railway network and worked the system uh, for, for many years. So there we are, that gives an idea of those early rail cars and uh, in the next railway history I shall be looking at the later, the next development in the rail cars which are the diesel, uh, first of the diesel rail cars so um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. It's free. There's no obligation. Uh, and um, please leave comments and give me a thumbs up if you, fact, if you in enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, this is now um, getting into this is the third part of the uh, railway history of the County Donegal Railway uh, Railcar Fleet. And I shall be continuing that in my next uh, video.